We've unboxed and inspected this great little ELF 83 FPV brushless starter kit, and now it's time to flight test it, starting with the Loz flight. Enjoy, subscribe, and comment. So a lovely sunny but windy day in the UK. But I've got the DYS ELF 83 with its included transmitter and obviously the quad as well. So we're going to give this a try. Now I've been looking at the switches on this transmitter. It looks like this one's arm on and off. This one is um, basically initially angle mode. And when you flip it down, you then get to unlock the advanced modes. And then this one switches between angle horizon and acro. Uh, finally, you've got your beeper switch on the end here. Now all of that's reprogrammable, of course, within Betaflight by hooking this up via the USB cable. But I'm reviewing it as it ships so that people who just want to get into the hobby can understand how this works. So first of all, turn on the transmitter, get a lovely little screen there. And we've got a whole menu system here as well. And remember, we've got telemetry as well, which is very cool. Power up the quad <clears throat> like that. And now we're on. So first of all, a bit of a line of sight test. Now I do only have one battery charged up for this, which is annoying. So this will be a very, very quick line of sight test, but let's give it a go. So arm, you can see we don't have air mode enabled there. <clears throat> So first of all, arm, and up we go. Hey, now this really does remind me of the Armour 90. Very similar design and shape and everything. Brushless, of course, again. Uh, oh. <laughs> wow, that wind really is coming in now. I'll try and have my back to it so you can actually hear me. Um, but yeah, very, very similar to the Armour 90. Feels very punchy. The rates are very high on this as well. So you can see I'm giving it the movement and it's very, very responsive. Uh, let's give it a bit of a punch. Now this is really being carried by the wind quite badly and that's probably because of the amount of surface area and those big ducts or prop guards on there as well. But let's try a punch. So here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, so that's certainly not going to uh, dazzle you with power, but <laughs> still it's not bad. And this is really, I guess, more of an indoor quad than an outdoor quad, but let's see how it flies. Feels very, very weird. The yaw rate on it is very, very slow, uh, but it flies all right. Again, I find these duct quads uh, quite hard with uh, orientation and remembering which way around it's actually facing. Uh, but yeah, that goes all right, actually. Now on this transmitter, we do have other switches, as I mentioned. Now, if I switch this one down, now we're in horizon mode so we can actually loop and roll this now like this <laughs> and this yay <laughs> now this is doing pretty well considering it weighs virtually nothing and it is windy today so i'd say it's doing very very well indeed now i'm going to flip that back up if i was to flip that down again we'd be in acro mode but anyway as i said i've only got one battery so Let's land this, get it into acro mode, and do some FPV flight testing. So first impressions of the DVR footage are really positive. The footage is bright, vibrant, and full of color. This camera is really impressive. It is, however, a massive shame that the camera tilt isn't settable. The CCD camera is really proving its worth here as well. As you can see, the transition from sky to ground has no impact at all on the exposure, and that's really impressive. You can see from the factory OSD that the flight mode is shown top left of the screen, flight time bottom right, and the voltage bottom left. The artificial horizon is also enabled, and I despise those, but I wanted to keep the configuration stock so it's time to take off, and we'll initially start in stabilized mode just to see how it performs. There seems to be plenty of power. The punch, however, saves me as I turn here and accidentally dip a little bit too low. A battery with a better C rating might give a little performance boost, as would a 3S if this quad will take it, and I didn't get around to testing that. The range on this VTX is seriously good as well, considering that the antenna is a dipole and it's incorporated inside the body of the quad and not externally exposed. Right, time to get serious, and so I gained some altitude and then switched to acro mode. And now it's time for some fun, and of course some acrobatics. 
So I start with a few rolls and loops and find that this quad is pretty unstable in the wind, which has picked up at this point. And as I perform one stunt, I do actually almost fall out of the sky, but luckily save it at the last moment. I suspect that the ducts of this tiny quad aren't helping with the acro capabilities, and I think that they're messing around with the airflow. Flying acro indoors wouldn't be an issue, of course, but out here and in this breeze, it's not particularly easy. But otherwise the quad flies really nicely and you start to forget that you're flying a tiny 83mm quad. The camera is also superb and as good as most full-size cameras that I've test flown. As I mentioned in the review as well, I also love how protected the camera is in its solid housing. Time for another VTX range test and yet again it impresses with hardly any breakup or interference. Dipole antennas are really underrated, and on small micro quads like this, I personally prefer them because they're far more crash resistant, and I've actually lost count of the number of micro quads that are currently unflyable because of a missing or broken circular antenna. I'm really enjoying flying this quad, however, I do feel that the factory tune has room for improvement. In addition, the rates are a little bit awkward and do feel a little bit clunky when you're turning. A camera with a tilt would also of course be a great benefit because you are very limited as to how fast you can fly and you end up just basically looking at the grass if you pitch too far. The flight time of just over two minutes is pretty good considering that this is a brushless quad and that the battery is a very small capacity battery. I'll put some positives and negatives up on the screen now but in summary this is a great set with a lovely transmitter, nicely designed quad and lots of additional accessories included. It flies really well and has plenty of power, although its performance in wind can be a little bit clumsy. Links to the DYS ELF 83 are in the video description. Please do comment below with your thoughts. Give the video a thumbs up and of course click that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Thanks very much for watching.